God is saying he does not want the city to build to be built mm. so again the notion is not really what we like to focus on the, the, the tower is important but it's the city concept the mm. urban lifestyle that city life brought together the sons of God and the daughters of men because the lifestyle was interesting and the result of that was the flood now hello everyone and thank you for joining us once again at the biblical perspective on youtube and um, today we are continuing with our series of study on the book of genesis and we're on lesson number five which is all nations and babel so we are continuing in our studies and we're just glad that you are with us today you're with myself colleen and with pedro and we'll be taking the bible study with you today if you're new to the biblical perspective don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also don't forget to like this video so we can spread the message of god's word to a wider audience and um, before we go any further and i get straight on with the study we're going to start with a word of prayer pedro could you please pray for us let us pray, Father in heaven, we are thankful once more for the opportunity to study your word. We just pray for blessing. And this can only be through the giving of your Holy Spirit, whether we speak or we listen. It may all be to your glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So Pedro, we're on um, study number five, um, all nations and, um, and Babel. So I want to get straight on with the questions for um, this week's study. So the first question that I want to, to ask is relating to a particular text that's quite, um, I don't know, somehow different and sometimes difficult to understand, you know, why a certain text is there or what's the function of a particular text and I wanted to um, to discuss speci specifically Genesis 9 and um, 19 to 24 and I just wanted to know like what's the actual function um, of this particular story okay yeah well, you want so, to read that yes yes I'll, right. I'll read that so um, I'm reading from Genesis 9 and I'm reading 19 to 27 and it says and these were the three sons of Noah, and from them came the people who were scattered over the earth. Noah, a man of the soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard. When he drank some of it, its wine had become, he became drunk and lay uncovered inside his tent. Ham, the son of Canaan, saw his father's nakedness and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japhet took a garment and laid it across their shoulder. Then they walked in backwards and, and covered their father's nakedness. Their faces were turned the other way so that they would not see their father's nakedness. When Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan, the lowest of slaves will, be, will he be to his brothers. He also said, Blessed be the Lord, the son of Shem. May Canaan be the slaves of Shem. May God extend the territory of Japheth, and may Japheth live in the tents of Shem and may Canaan be his slave. So wow. that's a very interesting text. So could you please explain the so, function so of this? I, 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 I can understand the reason why you would want to know the function. You understand the story yes. because it's understandable, but understanding its function, I think it's a really good question because what do we see here? we see this guy called noah and i'm yes. saying this respectfully why because the bible says he was a righteous man yes. in the midst of a corrupt Generation. world mm. and he's just been saved from the flood yes, that has. destroyed the rest of the, of the creation yeah and now what we see right after that is he loses his moral judgment yeah. because of substance abuse. Yes. Now, th th there is something for us to think about here. In this case, this substance abuse is alcohol. Yes, definitely. 
And then what we... So he loses his moral judgment and he goes into his tent and do whatever he did. It came from. The consequence of that is his youngest son mm -hmm. now does something and whatever he does, it is, it is, it is immoral. Yeah. Whatever he does, it is in contrast to what the two brothers yes. do first and secondly it is more than what noah can handle when he is sober yes so here is the first thing in terms of the function of that story all these people were righteous people who came out of that flood yet as soon as they come out we realize that the flood did not put a stop mm, to the wickedness to wickedness no it didn't the flood did not put a stop to evil mm -hmm. to the controversy between good and evil that which is moral and that which is immoral yes that's the first thing we need to understand in addition to that it means the flood did not get rid of the cause of evil it may have got rid of all the evil people but the cause of evil which we met in one of our studies the serpent is still around yes. so that's the first thing we need to um, recognize as being the function of that story the, 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 the second thing if you read for me verses 25 to 27 again okay he said cursed be Canaan the lowest, the lowest of slave will he be to his brothers he also said blessed be the Lord the God of Shem may Canaan be the slaves of Shem may God extend the territory of Jephthah may Jephthah live in the tents of Shem may Canaan be his slave this is the second thing and I think very very important and we need to pay attention to this his youngest son Canaan is the one who committed whatever he committed that was immoral abusive unacceptable yes that's however Noah curses his son yeah Canaan now this word Canaan now our ears must be attentive yeah why, why you have Shem you have he blesses Shem he blesses Japhet he should curse Canaan but but he did curse Canaan did sorry he? sorry <laughs> he, 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 he should have uh, cursed Ham Ham thank you but he doesn't he curses Canaan and also as well which is interesting do you know when like the story is introduced why would would it say in 22 ham the father of Canaan this is the point now this is the here is the second thing concerning the function of that story who wrote the book of Genesis the Moses, book of Gen sorry, Moses <laughs> wrote the book of Genesis yeah where was he and what was the audience to whom he wrote this book if we just take the first five books of the Bible which we call the Torah of which Genesis is part the audience is the children of Israel right if you take after Genesis you have Exodus Deuteronomy Leviticus numbers yes it addresses the children of Israel in the wilderness why are they in the wilderness um, because they've just come from slavery and they, rather than going straight into the promised land they wandered around for 40 years so basically wilderness. basically they are transitioning from Egypt to Canaan the land of Canaan mm. you're with me what we see here is a curse upon Canaan yeah. So the children of Israel, can you imagine? Moses reveals that story. Moses reveals that the land you are going to take 
now and you will have to fight for it you will have to kill for it you will have to displace the people you will have to chase them out that's the land of Canaan let me tell you about Canaan let me tell you about how it got to this are you with me yeah. there is an intention in that story that is to validate vindicate authorized if yes. you like what is going to take place right in the land of, of Canaan. Canaan right I understand so that is the function of that story two things evil is still around the flood the water can't get rid of the devil and the conflict between good and evil, righteousness and unrighteousness, morality and immorality is still around. Water doesn't destroy that. Secondly, it has to do with the land of Canaan. Canaan is not a land to begin with. Canaan is one person and that person is under a curse. Yes. And that will result in you taking over Canaan because the blessing has been pronounced. Yes. Okay. So, um, just quickly, so we don't know what, in regards to Ham, like, did anything happen to Ham? Was he, it doesn't, there's nothing to indicate that he was cursed in any way. The text is very clear, and this is why you need to understand. And I know there is a lot of, um, there, 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 there are lots of theories. Uh, theories about this. But if you look at the text and you understand the function of the story, that's why I thought your question was really good because it get it gets rid of all the propaganda yes, against Ham. To this. Because the purpose of the story is what I told you. You're with me. So yes. nothing happened to Ham. In fact, if you look at the table of nations, Ham lives amongst all the others. There is a mixture of, of, of them on the table um, when you read the table of nations. So the function of the story is not about Ham. It's about the land okay. of Canaan. The land of Canaan. All right, that's fine. Thank you for that. So just quickly, I wanted to go and think about um, Genesis 11. Now we see like a project here and I just wanted to find out what is the real problem with the people's project that we see in Genesis 11.4. So I'm just going to quickly read that. So Genesis 11.4 um, and it says, Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Mm -hmm. So, so what is your question? Like, what is the real problem with the people's project in Genesis? Okay. So, what's what's the problem with what they're trying to do? Okay. Here? This is a, a, a great question again because it will shed light on something we overlook in that story, and push on the side a bit more what we usually focus on. I want you to notice. Can you read for me verses 5 and 6? Read that for me, please. And okay. we will discover what the real problem is. Okay. So 5 says, But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the men were building. The Lord said, If as one people speak in the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan plan to do will be impossible for them okay so first of all in verse 4 they say they don't want to scatter their problem is they don't want to disperse no, they, they don't, don't want to spread this comes as disobedience mm -hmm. to begin with but in verse 5 and 6 i want you to notice three expressions the first expression is a city yes we've met cities before particularly in Genesis chapter 4. Mm. Somebody who was disobedient to God, rebellious in his heart to God, mm. built a city. Mm. So we have city. Then another expression we have is children of men. We've met that expression before under another form. That is the daughters of men. Daughters are also children. Yes. So first expression, a city. Se 
Second expression, children of men. Where do we met that? Just before the flood. And that line means people who are rebellious because it is opposed to the sons of God. Yes. So we have two things already. A city that we met, we met in the story of pure rebellion, building a city. Second, the children of men that we met in a story that explained to us why God had to destroy the whole world because of rebellion and wickedness. And the third expression is in that story, they will succeed in all that they have imagined. This is another expression that we meet in that very story of the flood. So three things, a city. Second, um, what did I say? The second, um, the children, children of, men. of men. Third, imagine. Imagine, basically a picture of wickedness on its way back. Mm. after the flood yes. is being built here. That's the real problem that God is addressing in this. And we understand that if that caused the flood to come, there is a danger. Yes. Just after the flood, there is a danger. Wickedness is on its way, way back. back into the world. And God cannot afford them. To do that. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So um, there is a dangerous link here uh, between these, peop these people in, 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 in chapter 11 and the descendants of Cain. Okay. Who brought all by themselves the flood upon the world because of the legacy yes. of Cain. Okay. So, um, prior to this though, um, there's this con consistent um, phrase about um, scattering the people. And um, why did God insist on actually scattering them? God has to be proactive this time. He reacted to their wickedness in, in chapter 6 by the flood. But this time, he has to be proactive. God is working on a plan. If you read for me verse 8. Please, okay, of the same so chapter. Genesis 11 verse 8 and it says, So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth and they stopped building the city. People like to focus on the Tower of Babel. Mm. But do you realize that the tower is in a city? Yes. The city comes first. The tower is in a city. And in verse 8, forget about the tower. God is saying he does not want the city to be, to be built. Mm. So again, the notion is not really what we like to focus on. The, the, the tower is important, but it's the city concept, mm. the urban lifestyle, something that we've already seen before and we've seen the, the results. So God has to be proactive about that. Another text that you can read for me, that's Genesis 6 now. You go back to Genesis 6 and read verses 1 to 3. Please. When men began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with men forever, for he is mortal. His days will be will be 120 years. Okay. Um, that coming together, that, that urban lifestyle, that, as I've already said, that city life brought together the sons of God and the daughters of men because the lifestyle was interesting and the result of that was the flood now you need to understand that you're asking why god is insisting on, on scattering, scattering them. them the flood story was not far from these people how do i know the bible says that it is at the time of peleg that the men were scattered and we will come back to that Peleg um, 
when, when the scattering happened, um, Peleg means division. Peleg was the fifth generation after Noah. So the scattering, that story that we have in 11, which actually comes before chapter 10, happens the fifth generation after Noah. Yes. So Peleg was born, when, when, when um, Peleg was born, do you know how old Shem was? No. Shem who was in the boat, in the ark. No. Shem was only 195. And he lived for 600 years. Okay. So the flood story was just the other day. Mm. When the scattering, when God decided, I can't have these people sticking together like this. The flood story was just the other day. Okay. Are you with me? Yes. So God had to be proactive. And God uses the principle of separation to do that. That principle of separation, you have it right at the beginning when God separated the light from the darkness and we need to pay attention to this and it continues also in the Bible in fact if you read for me 2nd Corinthians chapter 6 verses 14 to 17 it says um, do not be yoked together with unbelievers for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common or what fellowship can light have with darkness what what harmony is there between Christ and Baal what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever what agreement is there between the temple of God and idols for we are the temple of the living God as God has said I will live with them and walk among them and I will be their God and they will be my people therefore come out from them be and be separate says the Lord touch no unclean thing and I will receive you in order to save the world and unfold the plan that God had for humanity, he had to use the principle of separation, particularly between light and darkness, righteousness and unrighteousness. Because if he did not, the world would be condemned again. And, and that's why it's important to understand that the flood for them was just the other day. Yes. You with me? So the principle of separation, God will be proactive and he will scatter them. When he says they will succeed because it what they have in mind, mm -hmm. it's not that they would have reached heaven. No way they would yeah. have done that. But what God is talking about, they would have succeeded in again bringing utter corruption yes. in this world right after the, the flood. flood. Mm. Yes. Yes. And God had already said that he would not flood the world a second time. But he would have had to do, he would, he would have to do something else because that would be impossible yeah. to bear. Now, when we read 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses um, 14 to 17, we don't think of the flood. No. But let me tell you. We think of something totally Paul, different. Paul has this in mind. Yes. So, um, relating to these people and relating to um, Genesis 11, um, is there something for us as Christian today? Is there a link um, between the people that we have here and Christianity today? Do you remember Genesis 1 1? Yes, I do. Can you quote it? <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> in the beginning, God created the heavens and, and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And do you remember Genesis 11, 8 that you just read? Okay, just read it for me again, please. Genesis 11, 8. Yeah, Genesis 11, 8. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth and they stopped building the city. Okay. The reason why they wanted to build a city Earlier on, they said, let us make a name for ourselves. Your question is, is there a relationship or a link between these people here and Christianity today? 
Absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. There, there is a tension that has never gone away from the moment evil came into this world. There is a tension between God's will and humanity's desire for himself, herself, themselves that is always at play yes. in this world. And what we can see in Christianity today is what we have seen from the beginning. Yes. That tension is only rising as time progresses. Are you with me? So, is there a link? Absolutely yes. Why? Because we do want to think about ourselves first. Mm. But Jesus said, if anyone will come after me, let him yes. do what? Deny himself. Deny himself and then do what I tell him to mm. do. Go through the due process so that he will end up being my disciples. If he doesn't do that, he is not worthy of me. If he puts anything before me, he is not worthy of me. This is what we see in that yeah. story. Are you with me? Yeah. So that tension here can only be released by one thing whether we do it consciously or unconsciously willingly or unwillingly it can only be and this is where Genesis 1 1 is important it can only be released by surrender yes you may choose to surrender willingly mm. that's what Noah did before the flood or you may choose not to surrender, surrender, but you will. And that's what God did. He surrendered them when they wanted to build that city. God said, you're going to go be scattered. Mm. I think it's very interesting that it says here, make um, a name for ourselves. Because even in modern day society, that's what everyone wants to do. Everyone wants to make a name for themselves. And that's within the context of Christianity. It's, it fits right in there. Christianity it's not, it's is making not... a name for itself outside of Christ today. Yes. Outside of Christ. But Christianity needs to understand that there is only one way of releasing that tension between our own desires and the will of God. And and that's surrender and you will surrender whether you want it or not at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow yes it's better for you to fall upon the stone mm -hmm. and be broken than to have the stone fall on you and you crush yes. that's what Jesus says yes okay Mm. So what about the, the language element here? Because that's typically the focus in regards to the languages being, um, being confused. What is, what is the question? Um, what about the language element? Because when we talk about the Tower of Babel and the city, um, we always talk about the, um, the languages being confused. Yeah, the, the, the word in itself suggests that there, were, there was confusion in between them so that they could not communicate, and so that they could not commune. Yes. You see, communion comes from communication, and all God has to do is to push a button. Yes. And that wasn't for their, um, their, their, that wasn't bad for humanity. That was good for humanity. Okay. So when God says he confused their language, it just means I, 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 just, I just switched off the, the, the communication yeah. means okay. so that one wouldn't understand what the other is saying. Therefore, you can't go forward. He was proactive because the flood or something destructive mm. was coming again. Not maybe the flood, but something destructive would, was would coming have come again. as a result. Okay, that was excellent, Pedro. Thank you for that study. And um, thank you for joining us at The Biblical Perspective. Please make sure that you thumbs up and like this video and also share it with someone who you feel will benefit from this study. So thank you once again, and I'll see you in our next study.